Good day, viewers. Welcome to the first totally fucked up Friday of 2015, which almost by necessity means most of the stuff I'm going to talk about is actually from 2014. You know, I'm talking about stuff that's a year old. You know, that old joke about uh, New Year's Eve, like to say, oh, see you next year. I like to do that. I like to say to people, well, I guess I'll see you next year, and then fucking avoid them for a year or more, just to show them that I mean business, that I'm not just playing fucking games here. But yeah, we're in a new year. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, <laughs> I've got new lights, which I'm kind of excited by, because it's less hot. Because uh, two days of around 40 degrees here where I live, uh, which A, feels like shit, but B, would get way worse with my old lights, which were very hot, and would heat up to death-like temperatures within two or three minutes. So my new cooler lights means I just have the normal ambient temperature, which is too fucking hot, which leads to a total fire ban where I live in Victoria and South Australia, our neighbouring state. Uh, yes, if you heard the rumours, in terms of fire rating, our second lowest fire risk for bushfires in Australia is low. The highest is called catastrophic, which we've learned from a couple of years ago where we had catastrophic fires which wiped out whole towns, that fires can move very, very fast way faster than people think, like a hundred kilometers an hour. In other words, you see something at the horizon uh, from your back door and you run to the front door where your house is and by the time you reach uh, the car in front of your house, the fire has actually reached your house. Not exaggerating, that's how bad bushfires get here. And that's what it's going to be like tomorrow in Victoria and Australia. So if you're in one of the danger areas, please take care. It's uh, if there are already fires in your area, it's probably too late to get out. So I hope you have a disaster plan. Uh, if there are not fires in your area, but they're telling you there could be tomorrow, get the fuck out. Get somewhere safe. For Listen to the country fire authority. Listen to the police and stuff. This shit is fucking serious, okay? I'm just complaining about being hot, but a lot of other people have got to worry about dying. That's like normal summer in Australia now. Speaking of normal in Australia, in case you haven't watched me for the last year, normal for me is saying what a bunch of fuckheads our government is. And just before Christmas, the announcement that Scott Morrison, who had been immigration minister, who oversaw the policy to ass fuck some of the most vulnerable people in the world, is now being moved to social services minister, sent a chill of horror through a lot of people. This is the guy who thought it was a good and positive thing to send uh, but desperate people to conditions that are punitive, that are basically fucking torture, and in some cases actually hand people back to authorities that they were fleeing from, that we know for a fact these countries torture and murder people who disagree with the regime. And they just went, oh, we'll just... You're running from them? We will just give you back to the fucking military. The worst possible people we could give you to. We just don't give a fuck. Now he's in charge of social services. And just before Christmas, announced a bunch of cuts to uh, various uh, groups that look after some of the most disadvantaged people in Australia. It's like, okay, he's warmed up on fucking over foreigners. Now he's going to fuck over Australians. And it's been noted this week, there's a bit of an irony of the tale of two BCAs. One, uh, the Blind Citizens of Australia, an advocacy group for blind citizens, is one of a number of groups who've just been slashed uh, straight out of the gate by Scott Morrison. But interestingly, the second is the Business Council of Australia, who've got everything they fucking want. And here's the thing that bugs the shit out of me. When people say, oh no, the balls is his government, it's just... Fiscal responsibility. They're just doing what's right. Get fucked. No, it isn't. It's brutal fucking ideology. Because if you cared about government handouts, you would fucking cut corporate welfare. Because corporate welfare is orders of magnitude higher than welfare for disadvantaged people. The hundreds of billions of dollars that are just fucking handed over to corporations that are usually majority foreign-owned, so this money just leaves the country. It's a fucking joke. Like, Tony Abbott can't show, oh, we cut the carbon tax. We cut the mining tax. We just handed billions of 
fucking dollars to a tiny number of people, most of whom aren't fucking Australian. It's insanity. These people are fucking lying scum fucks. It's like, oh, you want to have the uh, go, the budget in surplus? You want Australia to be really rich? Just fucking tax these companies for fuck's sake. You go, oh, thirty percent. That's too high for corporate tax. Well, it'd be something if they fucking paid it for a start. For fuck's sake, I'd be all for lower the corporate tax rate to 10% if the fucking corporations paid it. And I am not exaggerating. If corporations who did business in Australia, did the mining in Australia, paid 1% of their revenue in tax, we'd have so much more tax. That's how much fucking bullshit these people talk. It's lie upon lie, and it's evil fucking ideology. And these people, the people who benefit from the perks given to the mining companies in particular, they just score billions of dollars. Like, it's a matter of course. It's a fucking farce. Oh my god, the rest of the year, like all of last year, significant chunk will be saying what a bunch of fucking shitheads this government are. Just a little bit of advance warning, because these pricks will doubtless continue to give me new material. Hey, look, let's just talk about something slightly lighter. <laughs> Florida. There's barely a week goes by that I can't get a Florida story. And the Orlando Sentinel had a brilliant report on a couple that the police rescued from being uh, locked in a closet for two days. Uh, I say the police rescued them, but the police found the closet wasn't actually locked. And from all evidence the police were able to gather, this couple could have got out at any time. You may be surprised to learn drugs were probably involved here. It's hilarious. The people say they were chased into the closet. I assume it was chased by sort of green bug-eyed gremlins that were crawling up the walls and getting under their skin and they felt like they needed to retreat into the closet. And the, poli the report says uh, the police uh, found human feces and some uh, scouring pads which are used for smoking crack. Notorious. They said there was no actual drugs found in the closet. Pretty sure after two days they would have used up all the drugs they had. But also, just the way the report's written, human feces and uh, scouring pads which are used for smoking crack, that's where like either an Oxford comma or preferably an actual full stop and two se separate sentences would have come in handy because I just read that as not just scouring pads but these guys also use human feces to smoke crack. I don't have AZ with me today who's arguably slightly more expert in that field than I am, so I don't have an expert to ask, really, was that just badly worded, or do crackheads actually smoke crack through human feces? I don't know! Maybe they do. AZ will hopefully be feeling a little bit better soon, and he'll come back and he'll update us on that and many other things. But, yeah, when you've been locked in a closet for two days, or you think you have, and it turns out you haven't, and you've been sitting in your own shit and stuff, I think maybe uh, getting busted by the cops is actually a mercy for you. I'm just throwing it out there. I want to finish this week's video. Uh, this was like a Christmas fuck up. And I love this one because uh, it's pretty spectacular on a number of levels. Play-Doh uh, got in trouble. Uh, they had uh, one of their special kits. And it was supposed to be like a cake decorating kit. Like Play-Doh cake decorating kit. And something that was used to uh, actually uh, squirt uh, some piping onto the cake. Looks remarkably like a cock, quite simply. And uh, I loved it as soon as I saw headlines, parents outraged by the phallic symbol in this. It's like, oh, as soon as someone wants to go outrage after something like that, I think, you're a fucking idiot. But look, it looks a lot like a cock, and it's not just cock-shaped, but obviously it's played. It actually squirts goo out the end. I was looking at, there's so much reporting on this. One of my favourites was a news report, like a video report, 
when they pixeled out the actual toy that we're talking about, I go, for fuck's sake, that's how uptight people are. It's not an actual cock. It's not an actual sex toy. It's just a kid's toy that someone has said looks like a cock, so we better pixel it out. It's completely bizarre. And, yeah, it looks like a cock. I have to admit, I side with the Twitter commenter who said, thumbs up to the designers who got this past their boss. I don't know if you've ever worked in a big company, but something like this, it just doesn't, you don't just snap your fingers and it appears. It has to go through so many people. There's the people involved in developing the concept. There's the designers and then people have to sign off on the design. Then it goes into production and people have to see it in production. And apparently at no step along this way, and this would have gone through dozens of people, no one in the Play-Doh Empire said, you know, that looks kind of like a cock. And Spooge comes out the end. Maybe we want to read. But no one said that, apparently. And it went to market. And as for the parents who are outraged, you know, people say, there's always someone who's going to be indignant and say, oh, yeah, bleh, the parents have got to look after their kids. I have kids, okay? And as a rational human who's had kids, little toddlers who are the only little kids use Play-Doh, Kids get that, they're not gonna say, hey mum, your dad, you know, this looks like an erect cock. Because that's not something kids think about. There's the parents who are thinking that. And I was imagine parents saying, I have to take that off you because it looks like a dick. It's like, I could just 